One SSID, multiple passwords, is now possible with Ubiquiti Unify. It's not a brand new edition, but it is still fairly new, and it's very simple to set up. I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video. It doesn't take very long at all, and then once I've done it, I'm just gonna test it and show you that it all works. And then we'll just go through some considerations because there are a couple of things to consider with this. Um, so we'll discuss that in a minute. So let's get straight into the setup. Okay, so I'm in my dashboard and the first thing I'm gonna do is go down to settings here. And the first thing we'll do is we'll set up our VLANs. So we'll go to networks, we'll create a new virtual network and I'm gonna call this one YouTube, capital D, YouTube guest. Um, and we're gonna just let that auto scale. Now, because it's a guest network, you probably just go to manual and you probably just click isolation. So we can just do that. And if you wanna do some contact filtering and stuff, you can do that, but we're just gonna select that at the moment, add it. Then we're gonna do an IoT. So we'll go to YouTube, oh, capital T, YouTube IoT. And again, we're just gonna get that auto scale. And let's, for the sake of it, because it's our IoT devices, we're just gonna isolate that as well. So we'll select add. So we've created our uh, VLANs, we've got a default, a YouTube guest, and our YouTube IoT. And now we're ready to create our Wi-Fi. So we go to Wi-Fi, we're gonna create a new one, and we're gonna call this YouTube PPSK. Uh, now we don't have to fill this in, we can leave the password uh, blank at the moment because we're going to go down here to manual, select manual, and where it says private pre-shared keys, we're going to select that, and then we're going to start setting up our passwords. So each um, VLAN is going to need a password, so we'll go to the first one, we're going to select default, and I'm going to put in a nice secure password of password 123, and press add, and then we're going to add our next one, YouTube guest, Password one two three four. Add and then YouTube IoT password one two three four five. Okay, just remember to press add here because it's quite easy to press save and forget to press add. So just press add and then we have to say save and then we have to say add Wi-Fi network down here as well. So we've done all that. In fact, I'm just going to select this just to one of the access points, the U6 mesh. So we we'll add that Wi-Fi network. Okay, we don't need to do that. So now we're ready to um, test it. So that should all be up and working. In fact, let's see if the access point's changing. Yeah, the access point's just applying the change. So we'll be ready to get out of the laptop and test it out and make sure that it's all working. Okay, so we select our YouTube PPSK. We're gonna connect and we're gonna put in our password of password123, which was the password for the default network. So we select that. And then we're just going to IP config that, check, and you can see that we've got the 192, the 168200.9, which was the VLAN we were using for default, or the network we we're using for default. Okay, so let's disconnect from that one, forget the network, and then reconnect with the new password. So this one is password 1234. Connect to that. And then we're gonna IP config. And there you can see that we've got the uh, guest network, which was the dot four. So that's working as well, perfect. So let's just try the last one. Put in the password of password one, two, three, four, five. And connect to that one. I'm connected and then again we can type in ipconfig and you can see there we've got 192.168.5.9 so again that one is working so it's all working perfectly okay so that was really simple to set up and we've tested it's working and it's working beautifully so all good but and there is a but and i'm going to share my screen with you now and show you exactly what i mean okay so on the dashboard i go down to settings and we'll stay on Wi-Fi and we'll select the YouTube PPSK that we created. I'll scroll down to security. Security protocol is set to WPA2. Now, you should know that WPA2 is not as secure as WPA3. 
So the obvious thing to do would be to select the drop down and pick WPA3. But there isn't an option of WPA3. And that's because it's not possible to use PPSK and WPA3, which is a bit of an issue because potentially you've got a Wi-Fi network which is not as secure as it could be. Now for home use, that's not really gonna be a problem. Most people are not trying to hack into home Wi-Fi. But if you're a business, then that is gonna be a bit of a concern. And it's definitely would make me think twice about implementing PPSK for, for any of my business clients. So from my perspective, if I was gonna do it for a business, I would use separate SSIDs with those VLANs associated and separate passwords. It's a little bit more messy, but it's a better solution because you've got that additional security. The other thing is that six gigahertz, so the new band of Wi-Fi, is not able to do WPA2. It can only do WPA3, which means that basically you can't use PPSK with six gigahertz. So we've got PPSK has just recently come out and we've also got six gigahertz recently come out and they don't work together, which is a bit of an issue. So for me, PPSK feels a little bit gimmicky. Like it's a nice thing to have. Like if you're doing your home network and you wanna have like a really clean setup with just one SSID, you can give password to your guests, you can give password to your I IoT devices and then have one for yourself, then it's perfect. But for a business, there's some questions around security. And for me, I probably wouldn't use it. But it's up to you. You uh, use it as you wish. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you wanna know who we are and what we do, then check us out on Instagram. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.